All right, we're here in Peoria, and anytime I'm in Peoria and I see a blue and red A, it's got to be Chad Berman. So, Chad, welcome back. It's me or Goltz, I guess, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me a little bit about second year up here at Peoria and the prospect camp. Yeah, really, ex I mean, just really happy with kind of how this camp's evolving. Um, you know, we had great numbers this year. A lot of kids, uh, the interest in our program is really growing. You can tell kids um, we're now becoming a destination, you know, especially right. in the state of Arizona. And kids want to be a part of our program. They want to learn and get put in the work. So, you know, I see a lot of kids here that had uh, returned from the previous year, and it's good to see the strides they make. And, um, you know, uh, that's all great for our program, but it's just so – it's such an honor to be a part of assisting in the growth of hockey. Um, and so hopefully these camps are, are things they can uh, feed and apply towards uh, their goals and wherever they may want to go. You know, you and I have seen over the last three years the, the growth of ACHA hockey, the development of it, and uh, a lot of kids playing youth hockey, and with, the, with that development comes better quality too, doesn't it? Yeah, without question. I mean, the growth out here is um, exponential. It's, it's, it's just every year. It's, it's really it's impressive to see. It's kind of cool to be a part of this time, in this time, in this area. Um, and I, I don't see that changing anytime soon. It's only speeding up. And when you talk about bringing in a hockey player, you're also bringing them into a pretty first-class operation and, and university, right, that the education they're going to get is second to none down at the U of A. Yeah, it's not a hard pitch. I mean, um, if you want to get, you know, if our business school is one of the top in the country, uh, engineering, nursing, um, you know, I can go down the list. It's an excellent education, and, and if you like that and you like being in palm trees, and by the way, you play in front of four or 5,000 people, um, you know, what a, what a special experience the guys that finish our program get. Um, I just think we can provide something that's really once in a lifetime that there's not many teams in the entire country, Division One included, that can provide the experience that we can. So we're, we're really uh, excited and proud about that. And, um, you know, we're developing kids to become adults here, and, and, and hopefully we can help in that process. Let's talk specifically about some of the kids that you saw. I know you had kids from all over the place, from Alaska and everywhere else down here today. But... Uh, or this weekend, I should say, but talk about one in particular who's uh, kind of following in his big brother's footsteps, it looks like. Uh, Olsen? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, he. Uh, I love the bloodlines. Uh, <laughs> you know, great family, first and foremost, which is why those are such great kids. So, yeah, we got Orion's, uh, Orion's brother out here at camp, uh, which is great. I got a chance to see him, and it reminds me of Orion four years ago. Big, tall, skinny kid. Right. Um, but if he's got half of uh, Orion's work ethic and um, compete, and we got something there. He, he's a, a different kind of player than Ryan, a little more skilled, um, really high ceiling. I mean, I, I'm excited about him. I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave this camp, you know, feeling very good about the future with him and, and our program and what he can do. So, um, yeah, it's always good to have the bloodlines in your program running through. Anybody else stand out to you today that, that really made an impression that maybe you weren't expecting to see? Yeah, uh, a couple kids actually. Um, there's a kid named Fritz here who I think has a real high potential if he's willing to put in the work. Uh, big kid kind of uh, needs to take a, you know, he's, he's got a ways to go still, but he's, it's, it's there for him. Got good instincts. He needs to get stronger, put in the work with his legs, get more explosive. Um, I want to get the name wrong here. Right. Um, kid named Bailey really stood out. He's a junior in high school out of Alaska. Um, this kid's got all the tools to be whatever he wants. He just needs to put on muscle and mature. But uh, great instincts, understands the spacing of the game, attacks two-on-ones well. Um, he's a kid I hadn't even heard of before this weekend that now is on our radar for sure. So one of the things I really like about your camp as opposed to some of the others that I've seen is that you're there for these guys to, to teach them about the process too, right, about, about how it is to be recruited, how to get a hold of coaches. I mean, ACHA hockey is, is about growing the program and that's one of the things I really enjoy about watching it so compliments to you for that but is that something that you came up with on your own or did you pick that up from somebody um yeah it definitely is um you know I've been going to camps my whole life I've been to 100 camps and so uh it's almost a bit surreal for me to have my own camp now it's kind of cool um but when I did it you know I want to provide value I'm not trying to collect checks and say hey we have a hockey camp um, I want these kids to get something different than they've gotten at any other camp. So I, I did a lot of thinking. I put a lot of thought into how can I provide an experience of value that nobody else has offered. And I thought, you know, since I've been a head coach, I've, I've been shocked at how many people reach out to me, email, and you really don't know how to go about the process. So I thought, man, I could add value there. I could teach these kids. Absolutely. Uh, you know, so we do a, a good half-hour seminar on this is how you approach a, uh, contacting college coaches. This is how you follow up. This is how you prepare. Um, and make a great impression. And that could be the difference between sitting down and 
meeting with a coach or not. So that's really critical. Um, tons of kids want, everybody wants better hands, yet nobody has a stick handling drill. Right. Um, so I'm happy to, you know, sit down and show them our tennis ball, golf ball, uh, stick handling drill. Um, and then beyond that, you know, uh, you know, I learned a lot in the Naples um, clinic this summer for the coaches convention and I was able to take some pieces of that stuff and apply it to some of the on ice stuff some of the things that are that are evolving with the game it's such a skill development game now um, it's in and winning battles on walls now that's really what the game's about um, and so you know if I can you know again find these little things to apply um, provide great value and in return I think um, hopefully be a part of again the maturing process of hockey out here and help people grow and uh um, no matter where they want to go. Let's take a quick break. We'll come right back. We'll talk about your uh, upcoming season and uh, some of the guys that are coming in for you. We need you. We need you. We need you to support Wildcat hockey. The Wildcats are back in action, and it's time to show your U of A pride at the TCC Arena. Please call for tickets or come to the TCC box office. U of A hockey is affordable and fun for the entire family. We need you. We need you. We need you to support U of A Wildcat Hockey. All right, we're back with Coach Berman again for a final segment here to, to talk a little bit about uh, U of A Hockey. We're getting close already, right? I mean, you see the countdown. We're less than, what, two and a half months away from you guys getting on the ice? Yeah, yeah. Tell, tell me a little bit about the schedule. I know you got a couple of games early in the year that you're really looking forward to. One of, one of your prodigies is, is coming back to face you, right? Yeah, uh, uh, John Hogan will be back in town here. We, we scheduled Marysville early in the season. Um, that's going to be a lot of fun, and I'm sure we'll have fun with that. Um, and it'll be good to see, I think, for him especially to come back home. And as a coach, I think that's got to be a great experience for him. And really excited for him and the opportunity and uh, proud of you know what he's doing and the person he, he is and has always been. So I think that's going to be great. And then obviously us opening up the season with a home opener uh, against ASU. Um, don't know how you can't get more excited to start a season than that. So... Uh, a lot of good opportunity. We're on the road a lot early in the first month. I think we go to Oklahoma, Colorado, uh, Missouri State, and Arkansas in one month. So we pretty much get the bulk of our travel out of the way. Um, I like that personally with a new team that we can kind of bring everyone together, force them to ride a bus together, force them to kind of um, get to know each other more. And so I think there's a lot of opportunity in that. But certainly when you go on the road to Oklahoma and um, the Colorados, you better be ready to go. So we, uh, I hope it creates some urgency for us. And uh, you know, we're really excited about what we're building as far as our roster. We think we've taken another step, but ultimately uh, time will tell. Tell me a little bit about some of the guys that you're bringing in this year that are new to your program. But, but before we do that, tell me about the one guy that's coming back, the Coos, as we like to call him, coming back. And, and I know you're very proud of what uh, Anthony got for you guys this year uh, on and off the ice. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, it's easy to sit here and talk about the, the kid's skill set and, and the goals he scores, and I think he's a really underrated passer. He's got eyes in the back of his head type of stuff. He, he understands the kind of attention he draws on the ice, so he takes advantage of that space. Um, and uh, I think, you know, we've added some talent here to the roster that I think can really complement him well. Um, but what you don't know about Koos is how great of a kid he is. Uh, He's going to be our captain this year, not announced. So there's your little exclusive. There we go. Um, and so, and he's the perfect fit for it. We've got two, uh, what I think are excellent leaders him, between him and Chris Westland. Um, but uh, you know, Kus, he understands the process. He he doesn't, you know, he he was named, you know, he was up for Player of the Year, Rookie of the <laughs> Year, every possible accolade you could have. And when we do um, team awards, you ask him for his vote on. MVP and Rookie of the Year, and he doesn't even name himself. Right. You know, it's just who he is. Um, excellent sense of humor, very dry. He's, right. He's just, he's somebody you got to get to know to understand that. Um, for instance, all of our conversations this summer have been about his almighty men's league team. So he's very involved in this men's league team. Uh, uh, so, um, you know, just the kind of kid you want leading your program because he understands what it, the nuances of the things that matter, the little details of – uh, what we need to take the next step in this program, and, and he's going to be a great fit at that. Obviously, we're, we're excited to have him back, and he's been hitting the gym, yeah. knowing he's going to be a, a target. I've been kind of riding him weekly, saying, you know, let's, let's get some muscle on those bones because <laughs> um, they're going to target him. That's, that's how it is. It comes with the attention. You know, and I want to say that one of the things that I thought was really uh, underrated with him last year was his ability to bounce back from injuries. I mean, he was a target this year. And I saw that kid get hit many times pretty hard, and, and you know it better than I do, I'm sure. But he uh, he plays right through it, doesn't he? Yeah, he's a tough kid. I mean, he, he, 
uh, and if he puts some muscle on, he'll be even better, right? Right. Gosh, he was rocking a <laughs> <laughs> He's rocking a sleeveless shirt on the airport on the way home from nationals, and it was like, yeah, we got to talk about some weights here. Right. So, uh, shout out to you, Coos. <laughs> <laughs> so, tell me a little bit about that. We talked a little bit uh, off camera about your defensive core being being good, but just ex inexperienced. So, that's I guess the area you're going to work on the most probably in camp, huh? Yeah, I mean, I th obviously every detail matters, but uh, you know, we're really going to be really young in the back end. There's a lot of turnover. Um, but couldn't be more excited about the uh, talent coming in. A uh, kid named Devin Langliar has excellent feet, uh, really great hockey sense. He's going to be an immediate impact power play guy. Um, and what I like the most about him is when I, every time I talk to him, he's putting in the work to put on weight, get stronger. Um, he's a heck of a pickup for us. You look at Jones and Hall out of the St. Louis NA3 team, they, they came one goal shy of winning a national championship. Jones is going to be a, a Swiss Army knife. The kid can do everything. He competes. Uh, he's not the biggest kid on the ice, but you wouldn't know it. He's got a, a, a burning desire to win battles. Uh, he's feisty. He's competitive. He's got a great skill set as far as um, knows how to make that first pass, find pockets, make people around him better, um, puts pucks on nets. He, he's just—he's going to be a heck of a pickup. Um, and then you get his D partner, Hull, who's another great kid, uh, big kid, 6'3", uh, needs to put on some weight, and that's where the ceiling is so high for him. Um, he was drafted out of the OHL. It's just a ton of potential. Great kid. To, and to get, get to get a D pair, I think, is really important, especially when we're overhauling our D here. Uh, to bring in two kids who are familiar right. with themselves is, is a really important thing, I think. Um, That's a step up, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, definitely we're, we're excited about, uh, about all those kids. And, uh, you know, we, we need Cam Armstrong to take a step. We need Manny Rowe to take a step, um, uh, and et cetera. We, you know, Newfeld, Kearns. You know, there's a lot of kids there who've, who've got opportunity uh, as veteran guys, and, and I'm hoping they take advantage of that through the summer here. Let's wrap it up by talking about your goaltenders. I think you might have two of the best in the ACHA. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, that's why I'm so comfortable bringing in as many young defensemen as we are, because we've got some goaltenders that can uh, smooth out the bumps, and that's going to be great for their development. Uh, you you want to be able to count on your guys, but, you know, Churro's a kid who's got a chance to be a superstar. I think he's a World University Games potential. Um, Biv, I think, is a kid who uh, has all the potential in the world to do whatever he wants. I mean, and they're great competitors, great friends, great teammates. They push each other. Um, you know, Biv didn't play a ton last year because we had three good goalies. And now, you know, nice not to recruit because I know we got Biv there who's a, a no-brainer. The kid's got a chance to be a very good goaltender. And so to have those that tandem moving forward um, is so important, especially with our young D. We feel like the strengths of our team next year are going to be up front. We feel like we have a chance to have three really good scoring lines and a very good fourth line. When you add a Bailey Marshall, an instant impact center that you can put along Coos or put West in there, you know, there's just more, more uh, tools here for us to play with. Um, Bailey Marshall, Dawson Marshall coming in, you know, just uh, Kyle Wade, his kid is going to complement well and add some power play help. Um, you know, we just uh, we couldn't be more excited about what we're adding here to what we already have. And, and uh, furthermore, the, the culture's taken a step. And it's, it takes time. It's taken longer than I'd like. Um, but I think in the long run, that's what's going to be what pushes us over the top here. You know, as we wrap things up here at, uh, at Peoria, I call it your, your new home up here. It's called Prospecting in Peoria. Yeah. But, but tell us a little bit about, or I'll give you just a minute or two to talk about uh, the program to your uh, U of A faithful Wildcat supporters. Tell them what they can expect out of Wildcat hockey coming up this season. Um, you know, our expectations are very high, um, very high. Um, and so we got to hold ourselves to a high standard. Um, you know, it's tough because as a coach, to me, it's like, well, we'll see when and how it comes together. Right. You know, but the GM and me trying to promote this <laughs> team and stuff, um, you're going to find a very fast uh, attacking style of team, a transition team. We've added the thing we wanted to add to our D, that the kids that we brought in, is mobility and puck movement. We want to feed the beast up front. We want to get pucks up to Cusinelli, to the uh, Westlands, to the Bailey Marshalls, uh, Stallhuth. You know, we got a lot of firepower up front, but we got to get pucks up there. And if we're not getting out of our zone, um, that, that eliminates that. So we, we added D with a purpose. Um, we want to continue to, uh, to pound four lines at teams, and we think we can do that. We think our goaltending is excellent. I feel like we're very balanced. We're very motivated to do big things. Um, we want to take that step to be in the top ten. We want to go deeper into the tournament. We're tired of the one and duns. Um, and, and I really think this is the best team Arizona's had in decades, and I hope it's only the beginning of that journey because we're really, really young. I got two seniors this year, and all of our core guys are returning. We've got a good two, three-year window here. Um, 
And the only thing I think of every day I wake up is bring a national championship to this alumni, to our fan base, to our university. Um, um, it's a very difficult thing to do, but we're going to make it happen. Coach, I appreciate your time as always, and enjoy the rest of the summer. We'll see you in the fall. Thank you. In today's odor elimination, sanitizing, and deodorizing market, air spaces and fabrics are treated with very aggressive, highly toxic, and often very dangerous but cheap chemical-based solutions. These chemicals have harmful residues and pollutants that can impact your health and the well-being of those around you. This is the bad news. The good news is there's something better. That something is OxyPal. OxyPal is a fast-growing company based in Phoenix, Arizona, with franchises opening across North America. OxyPal has developed a way to eliminate, not mask or disguise, all organic-based odors in any airspace or on any fabric surface with ozone, also called trioxygen. Ozone is present in the atmosphere, and it is what protects our planet, our environment, and every living thing on Earth. Through years of research and development, OxyPal has perfected a way to harness and apply this powerful solution to purify airspaces and fabric surfaces safely and effectively, eliminating all organic bacteria, viruses, mold, fungi, and allergens on the molecular level. OxyPal has designed and perfected many next generation and evolutionary alternative products and services safe for people, pets, and our planet. The solutions offered by OxyPal are stronger, safer, non-toxic, and a great value. Visit our website and online store today at www.oxypal.com. On our website, you can make a service appointment, buy products, or learn more about us and our great franchising opportunities.